the award-winning Beyond Vaudeville program with your host, Frank Hope, and your co-host, David Green, Michael Musto, Joe Flyshaker, Leslie Holcomb, Joey the Dancing Monkey, and lots of surprises. Welcome once again to the Beyond uh, Vaudeville show. And our theme song is especially appropriate tonight uh, because uh, we're going to talk a little bit about creation, which uh, uh, if you haven't been to, we'll share with you uh, some uh, creation goers, including uh, myself. And uh, OK, and we have lots of uh, special guests, as you can see from the, the lineup. And uh, first, though, uh, let's, David, show some of the things that uh, we've been finding. This, uh, this is the uh, Big John, Little John uh, activity book, uh, the authorized edition with, uh, from the Robbie Wrist uh, series uh, that used to be on right, uh, I think, before Run, Joe, Run. And uh, they have all the characters, uh, the, the big dog that they had. And the, uh, that's when he's Big John. And there's, oh, that's not little, this, well, there's Big John and there's Little John, but it's really the same guy. But they, then he uh, got in the, fount, uh, the Fountain of Youth and, he, and then he changed. And uh, we also, uh, the official Fonzie uh, scrapbook from uh, Happy Days featuring lots of uh, photos of the Fonz. Hey. hey, sit on it. Okay. Also, uh, a copy of 16 uh, magazine that I, I kept a special page out uh, with this, where uh, Maureen McGovern tells you how to touch the boy you love, which uh, uh, and just a, uh, it, it, I found it very interesting because it shows from a, a woman's uh, point of view, how, uh, you know what what it, what people go through. Uh, okay. And uh, you should know a lot about that. OK, David, why don't you just not start in right in the beginning of the show like that? Uh, um, OK, well, maybe we should bring out our, uh, oh, wait, there's, oh, there's one other thing. Uh, I forgot the, uh, uh, I, got, I, I picked up a McDonald's uh, record on the way up. And if you play it and they sing the whole song. Yeah, I'm sure people want to hear that. Well, it, maybe I'm people, sure. maybe it's exciting. Like people oh, yeah. like to watch game shows, so oh, yeah. they'd like to see maybe if I win. Let's, oh, yeah. let's do it, just like a game show. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, it's 45. Uh, OK. OK. No, it's 30. Big Mac McDeal to your quarter pounder with some cheese filet, a fish, a hamburger, a cheeseburger, a happy meal, McNuggets, tasty golden fresh rose, regular, or larger size of salad, they have garden, to or a chicken salad, oriental, big big breakfast, egg, muffin, hot hot cakes, Now, if they sing the, the whole thing like, like the guy, the then, uh, then, uh, then you win. Honey, three varieties of saucer, comfy kinds of shakes, and chocolate, eat your cookies, and a drink of Coca-Cola, diet, coke, and orange, drink a Sprite, and coffee, decaf, two, a loaf, half milk, also an orange juice, I love McDonald's, good time, great taste, and I get this all at one place. Got it? Got it! Okay, now you do it! Big Mac McDeal to your quarter pounder with some cheese filet, and a regular, Oh, okay. Well, we lost, but uh, but that doesn't mean you can't win next time, right? And uh, yeah, play it again. Maybe you'll win next time. Well, it's all right because I go to McDonald's anyway, so why not just go and, and get the record? Okay, so uh, let's in, let's invite, please, our uh, first guest, who uh, is a very uh, very popular around New York, uh, known uh, because he he uh, goes to all the clubs, and uh, he uh, writes in the uh, Village Voice, the uh, which is the uh, alternative paper uh, in New York. And he uh, is, uh, oh, and he's a man about town. And also, he's uh, working on a, on a novel, uh, um, Manhattan on the Rocks. And I'm, I'm sure we can maybe talk about uh, that a little bit. Uh, let's please welcome Michael Musto. Hi, how are you? Is you, Mike. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> well, Michael, it's nice to have uh, an author on this show. Who? Uh, oh, me? Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, um, now you write uh, in the in the Village Voice. You do uh, a column. Where oh, I forgot to take. I had a better pair of pants underneath these, but 
Oh, maybe uh, later. Okay. Uh, they, uh, um, I like your shirt. Is that the Manhattan yeah, skyline? Yeah, this is uh, my book is called Manhattan on the Rocks. Coming out in the fall. Plug, plug, plug. And this is Manhattan on the Rocks. Now, is the is the book going to be all about uh, mm. uh, real life in Manhattan, or? I'm not at liberty to say. Okay. And uh, so now, what do you do in your column? You talk about the clubs. You go to all the uh, mm -hmm. all the clubs and. Uh, uh, I sometimes went out to movies uh, on weekends, but I found that the uh, everything was more crowded on you know at late at night, and uh, plus it gets you know the streets get uh, crazy after dark, and uh, but you don't that's that's when you really well, do all your work, right? A lot of people stay home on the weekends because they say the bridge and tunnel people. That's when they come out. Those are the people from the boroughs. But I like them. I think they're they're the real people. And since they are all in New York, they really are uh, New York, and they're, they're part of it, right? Well, they're the ones who pay to get in and pay for drinks, and without them, there wouldn't be nightclubs. Mm -hmm. Because the people who think they're so cool, like me, you know, I think I'm such hot stuff. Right. Uh, and we never pay. We, everything's complimentary. So you... you it just becomes a matter of principle. Even, you're, even if you're nothing and haven't done anything, what is that, a gerbil? Oh, that's a duck. All right, don't bother Michael yeah. Musto. No. It is vulgar and distasteful. Okay. So whatever it is. So you get the. Uh, what is this? That's uh, David, my co-host, who uh, yeah. uh, I didn't get a chance to warn you beforehand, but he doesn't. Uh, he's not very cooperative with the guests, and uh, we've been. Uh, he's rude. Yeah, it's, it's. I wouldn't even. Bother but I find him it. enchanting. Okay. Okay. Well, it's what you know. Whatever. I. Uh, uh, so now you. So you don't pay for food or drinks or they. Everything. Well, is um, food sometimes. You know, sometimes I do, but usually my mother brings over stuff, like lasagnas and things. Okay. Uh, so, and she doesn't charge me, so that's free. Uh, yeah, club, I get into clubs free, but it's all part of my job, you know. I mean, I, I, I do have to pay in other ways. Right, well... Emotionally, I am paying very heavy dues. To be... Uh, well, I, uh, my, my mother cooks uh, for me. She doesn't make uh, lasagna. You have a, an Italian mother who makes, yeah, makes yeah. the lasagna? Yeah, That's I, why I'm Italian, because... Oh, okay. My parents are Italian. I had a, an Italian uh, family in my neighborhood, and they. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. I'm so, I asked them not to do it. I'm I, sorry. Uh, now. Uh, Maybe this would be a good time for me to change. Oh no, I don't think oh. no. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is shown on Channel D, and you've been on some of those uh, dirty yeah. shows, haven't you? No, not dirty. I don't uh, think they're dirty. On the. Uh, oh, I've been on Robin. Oh, am I allowed to yeah, say oh, names of Channel J show? Robin Bird. And Midnight Blue. But we had very illuminating kind of conversations. It was more like a William Buckley kind of thing, firing line. Okay, so it, it doesn't have, and so when people say it's dirty, maybe it's really not that dirty. Well, it, it, dirt is in the mind of the beholder. Okay. Uh, my, my brain is, is all very clean and sanitized. And the thing is, lately I feel like my body's allergic to itself. But it, well, we shouldn't even talk about that. It's okay. distasteful. Well, I'll have to remember that, and I'll tell uh, my mother next time she tells me I can't watch Channel J that uh, that Michael Musso said it was okay. Oh. Uh, right? Totally, I, I'm 100% behind it. Okay. Now, uh, who who are some mm. of the who are some of your famous friends that you have? Well, though, uh, can we talk about who I haven't met? Because I haven't okay. met Eve Plum, and if anyone has met Eve Plum, I want them to contact me and tell me what she's like, if she's really, you know, all she's cracked up to be. Right. Because and she does get all that hype of being this great actress, and you know. I did meet Meryl Streep, and she was, you know, I think she is the talent that they say she is, but Eve Plum has remained out of my grasp, and I, I want to know. I'm curious. What about, do you like the other Bradys, or just uh, Eve I Plum? I like Maureen. I have to correct you. I, it's not Maureen McGovern. I think it's Maureen McCormick. Oh, I'm sorry. Maureen McGovern sang The Morning After. Oh, was that in this? In The Poseidon Adventure. That's right, about the boat. Uh, and that's she's so. equally talented as Maureen McCormick. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, Barry Williams was recently on Broadway. Maybe he still is in Romance, Romance. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, so he made a big comeback. And I have and Susan Olson. Susan Olson um, is starting a line of sneakers. Oh. And she was the one who was kicked off, or somehow left the Brady Bunch. The, she the was the youngest not, one, right? Yeah. And um, nobody knows. What, nobody will talk about why. What did she do? I, I have a, To not be. Was she not a good enough actress to be on the Brady Bunch? Well, I have a picture here, Michael, that you'll like. Uh, it's it's good to share this with you because I talk to David about these things, and he doesn't care. He just you know he doesn't want to talk. But I have a photo of Chris Knight here. Maybe the uh, cameraman could get a, a shot of that. Look, and there's Chris Chris Knight, 
Meet the Bradys in our hotel room. Oh, that sounds insane. Like that, you know, and uh, and that's why. And they don't write about Chris Knight anymore. You object to Channel J and stuff like that is in in the in that smut rag. No, hold meet no. the Bradys in our hotel room. No, there's. I think they're still around. I don't think you should say. You probably shouldn't say any. Uh, well, that that sounds rather suggestive. No, it's just it's all it's all in good fun. To just you know, oh, just to meet. Okay. You know. No, I'm joking. That, it's a lovely magazine. Okay. Well, uh, Michael, we have uh, more people that we'd like to uh, bring on, and uh, and uh, we'd please like you to stay and be a part of it. Uh, and uh, you know, since it's not too late, you Do don't I have, have to, to get out to the clubs. Well, we'd like if you if you could. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Well, let's uh, welcome our next guest. Who? Oh, you know what? He's in. Uh, he's in. Uh, he was in Radio Days. And uh, war, and now he's in Toxic Avenger 2. Uh, please welcome Joe Flyshaker. Please. Hi, Joe. Mm -hmm. Glad you could make it. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Now, Joe, when did you start uh, in the movies? Was that was, which one was your first one? Radio Days was my first one. Radio Days. Yes. Now I met Joe at uh, Creation, as I mentioned earlier, the the uh, convention. And uh, you've been going to Creation a couple of years? Uh, oh, yeah, two, three years now, sure. And uh, I remember that the thing that you liked, uh, well, you, you were a big Blake 7 fan? Uh, well, I'm a big fan of anything I'm a fan of. Okay. Just by the nature of being who I am. <laughs> uh, well, yes, I am a big Blake 7 fan. Okay. And uh, I'm also a Doctor Who fan. Doctor uh, Who? The particular person that had at that Creation convention was a Blake 7 personality. And that's why I was there. But the most fun I have is... Uh, just going out for a day and spending money. Okay. Well, it's good if you have it to do that. Well, uh, not afterwards, no. Oh. Well, uh, now, which do you like all the Doctor Who's or just one, you know, like one of them? Do you, you like? You mean all the actors who played the Doctor? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know them all. Oh. The ones I know I like. Oh, okay. And, uh, and it's easy to see them in the, in the U.S. now? Oh, yes. Uh, I watch them on a uh, number of, uh, in this area, they're on a number of uh, UHF uh, public channels. Mm-hmm. Channel 21, WLIW, oh. Channel 31, WNYC, Channel 50 for the New Jersey people, mm -hmm. NJN. So if you know where to look, you can find these things. Well, uh, I first saw them on Channel 9, uh, on WOR, many years ago. Uh, it looked like the silliest show I ever saw in my life. But then you got they, hooked, they, right? they, were, they were traveling around like uh, little people inside somebody's brain, and I thought it was pretty strange. Right. But I figured Saturday morning anything happened. Uh, uh, that's true. And it took years before I realized it was a real show. Now, your buttons are, are well, relate to... this is a, a, a unit button. Unit is, a, is something from the Doctor Who show, uh, UNIT for United Nations Interplanetary Task Force. It was used during the show many times over as uh, sort of uh, a way for government to interface with Doctor Who and his uh, people from outer space. You know, you've got to have somebody you can talk to because you go to your average policeman, he thinks you're crazy. So to have this organization. This one here, which says UNYT, is the name of a uh, New York-based, New York City-based uh, fan club. For uh, stands for United New York Task Force, of oh. which I'm a member. Okay. Uh, this button here, which says uh, Apocalypse, is a button of my own design. It's a prop from the movie The Toxic Avenger Part Two, where I play an evil corporate executive whose goal is world domination through pollution and evil. And I work for a company called Apocalypse Incorporated. But that's just that's not for real. That's just like a uh, that's just a movie. Uh, well, it was uh, it was for real while we were doing it. You know, we were really trying to dominate the world. It didn't work. Okay. Well, the Toxic Avenger uh, did us in. Uh, uh, it's unfair okay. when you're up against somebody with super strength. Well, Joe, we're going to uh, look out for your uh, uh, movies, and uh, we please want you to stay on. Uh, uh, and yeah, but, right. But we just, David. Well, you told me if I don't stay, I don't get the cab fare home. So. Oh, that, that's right. And uh, I just, uh, I just wanted to apologize for uh, David's uh, uh, reading. Uh, Michael, it's okay. No, it's okay for oh, you because okay. you're the you're the guest. But I think it's oh, very okay. rude for David to read, and it looks like he's reading stupid. I told you he was rude. He's reading an income tax book, which is so boring. I don't know how you even how you even stay awake, David, with the things you do. Uh, oh, this, you're reading this, this is quality literature. This Barnabas Collins. Oh, that's um, the, in a funny vein. V e i n. Get it? So it's jokes. That's the dark shot. The dark shadows funny. guy, who's also on on some of those channels that uh, yes, that you mentioned, it's on, it's yeah, Joe. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's bring out our, our next guest too, uh, <clears throat> so we can. <clears throat> I'll be here. Uh, uh, our next guest is uh, 
uh, a uh, science fiction uh, fan uh, who also uh, I met at uh, Creation. And uh, please uh, welcome Mr. Uh, Leslie Holcomb. Uh, hi, Leslie. Hello. Now, uh, I guess uh, we didn't get uh, too much into detail about what creation is. Maybe you could uh, just explain it for the uh, people who don't uh, watch. Uh, yeah, it's uh, no, a bunch of weirdos. It's a bunch of weirdos okay. get together and have a weirdo convention. Okay, I didn't ask you, David. I think I asked I know guess. you uh, felt right at home there. Okay, all right. Leslie, could you please tell us what, uh, just explain uh, creation and, uh, you know. Creation convention is a company that sponsors conventions, is usually of a science fiction nature. And it's, it's run by a man named Adam Mayer and a couple of his assistants. You're right from the horse's mouth. David, you want to sit? Uh, that's our Adam and Gary, these, uh, two, uh, those uh, two guys who have uh, been putting it together. And they, got, they have conventions throughout the country. And most of them are in the New York area, but some elsewhere as well. It's, it's a very good company if you want to go to a science fiction convention. Right. Now, uh, and now that show's been going on for, how, I've been going since, uh, 1970, I think I went 1978 to the Sheridan Center many years ago when it, when it used to be there in New York. Yeah, made you what you are today, right? <clears throat> okay, David, if you don't have anything nice to contribute, then maybe you shouldn't even uh, think of contributing. 1978, I think I first went, and uh, I, did you guys start going back then? Or? I started going in October of either 82 or 83. Okay. I started in 84. Oh, so I've, I've been going longer than you guys yeah. to uh, You got it. Creation. You got him. You got him. Oh, well, I, I went I heard you were there. That's why I went. Uh, well, uh, um, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but the journalist. No, now dead. it's all... Oh, Michael, I don't know what... Can we dispose of the what were we corpse? Oh, we were... T creation. Yeah, that... Uh, okay. Oh, it'll just decompose. Go on. Now, uh, uh, okay, so... Oh, so that's uh, creation then. Uh, now, what do they do? They, uh, they sell stuff, they, they're dealers. They, they get those tables. There's also a room usually where you can view various movies. And you know TV what they do when they watch those, you know? Okay, oh boy, oh boy. okay. I'm sorry? There's, there's also a room where you can view various movies and TV shows and whatnot. And there's also a main auditorium where most of the, how shall I put this? Most of the events will take place at. Like uh, at the last show, they had uh, Tony Perkins was there. Yeah. At the last. They usually have a couple of uh, well-known people from the shows who get up on stage and uh, just answer questions and talk about their experiences on the show or off the show. I, I guess the big problem with creation, though, is that it's too much. It's like if, if you're if you're interested in one thing, you can't go. You know. You, well. I recently went to a three-day Blake 7 convention, run by fans, and limited attendance, 500 people maximum. It had six different uh, personalities from the show, including a couple of the main characters. And uh, you had a lot of time because there, was six, there were three days there, a limited number of people. You had a chance to talk to them. Yeah, good thing there was a limit, otherwise you might have had, had 10 or 20,000, right? Well, David, you have yeah. a hard time. Good thing you kept those throngs of people out of that uh, great convention there. Yes, it is good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm There's sure. enough traffic by the airport where they had it. Yeah. They need more. Yeah, keep okay. aiming. All right, David's just joking. Uh, uh. Live long and prosper. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we should uh, change. Uh, maybe we should move on to something else now. Uh, uh, oh, Michael, do you like science fiction at all? What? Do you and the uh, oh. science fiction? Um, my book is called Manhattan on the Rocks. It's coming out in the fall. Oh, oh boy. It's a novel. Okay. Oh, is there going to be any science fiction in that novel? It's fiction. Or, okay. Okay. There's no science in it. Oh. All right. Now let's move on to uh, Joey the monkey who's going to dance to the uh, theme from uh, Jaws with a special uh, beat to it. Oh, I'm sorry, that Joey, that's the end of the other song. I think it's going to be right. Oh, thanks for telling us. No, no, go, no, go back. Oh, OK.
Jason Grove. See Joey over by uh, Leslie. Joey. Oh. Okay. Joey's gonna bring the puppet that uh, somebody that uh, David had to room. Uh, okay. So now what? Uh, now what can we talk about? Uh, that was so vulgar. You couldn't possibly top that. Oh. I I've, I've topped that. I think it I, I did Frank uh, Sammy Davis Jr. on a, on a video of dancing. That's vulgar. That is vulgar. Oh. It's grotesque. Mm. <laughs> Tiring. <laughs> Do you have a mucal problem? <laughs> I I don't know what I think uh, maybe we should oh uh, okay. I, I don't know. I just try to do this show, and, and now it's all, it just doesn't seem like it's working right tonight. I don't know what, what, I think it's all uh, your fault, David, for putting things on the wrong foot, the, starting the whole night off wrong. You're incompetent. All right, David, I'm incompetent, so you're going to run the show yourself. You go right ahead, and you run the show yourself. No, Joey. No. Go stay with him. Let David run the show. David is so good, and he's such a critic, that he's going to do the show all by himself. Uh, Mr. Musto, could you tell us about your book? It's, uh, how much have you written? Um, I, I can't go on without, like, I got used to the show being a certain way with him. You know, whoever he is, I was growing to sort of like him. I, I, maybe they have something more to say about Sammy Davis. Maybe they do. Sammy who? Sammy Davis. Never heard of him. Okay, well, didn't that work very well? Well, David, didn't that work just great? Boy, you really know how to run a show. Yeah, Frank doesn't know how to run a show, but I leave you here alone for 30 seconds, and you don't even know, you can't even start to talk to anybody. Yeah, well, no. Why do I do this show? Yeah, why did you ask Michael the same exact question I asked him when I started the yeah, show earlier? how much early? do you pay me to appear on each of these shows? Okay. How much do you pay me? All right, let's... You know why I do this show. Okay. I don't have any interest in your little uh, artsy-fartsy whatever here. Joe, are you doing any yeah, other you movies? you think it's so cool you have a show. Joe, you... Yeah, you just keep the money coming. You know, oh, it's fine with me. Joe. I'll do whatever you want. Well, not whatever you want. Joe, you doing any movies? Any more movies, you think? Well, I hope for a role uh, to play a doctor. Doctor? A doctor. Uh, in a movie. I don't know anything about the movie, just that I'll be a doctor. Is it going to be a, a, a serious movie? A serious movie, a dramatic film. They said it's going to be a serious film, uh, which sounds kind of serious to me, but I think I'll do it anyway. Okay. Uh, Leslie, you said before when you came in that you recognized the uh, equipment, uh, the lights and all that. You were on TV? Once my before? father used to work in a TV station, first as a jazzman. He's good. And later, uh, and later in video operations. Oh, okay. So, you know, so you've seen all this stuff. And, and most uh, of this I have seen, yes. Okay. And, uh, and you have a, a VCR at home because I had that you gave me the video yes. to copy. I think uh, you two should do something after the show. Oh, okay, David. Why don't I stop it now? Uh, Joey, how are you? Oh, see, Joey's, Joey's happy. Okay, now the show is starting to be good again. And I think it was good in the beginning before uh, everything got out of hand. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, and that's where it all started, I think, when David threw the puppet uh, down. Uh, okay, well, uh, how, much, how much time is left? What, two minutes? 
Uh, okay, so we better get, oh, let's get to the th closing song. Uh, this is from David Cassidy's Greatest Hits. Uh, and uh, we'll play, uh, oh, oh yeah, that's, we, we showed this before, Joey. This is the uh, Barnabas Collins uh, book. And, uh, okay, well, let's play I, I Think I, I Love You, one of the good uh, Partridge Family songs that they did. Uh, but it's David Cassidy. Okay, uh, thanks for uh, coming on our show, Michael. And uh, we'll look for your book. And uh, Joe, uh, we'll keep an eye out for your movies. Okay, Leslie, thanks for coming on. We'll see you at the next uh, creation. And uh, uh, Joey, thanks again for dancing. And okay. And thank you, puppets. Uh, oh, and thank you, uh, cameraman. I didn't know how to deal with it, and so I just decided to myself. I'd hide it to myself. Thank you. And never talk about it, and did not go and shout it when you walked into the room. I think I love it.